Welcome back to Flashback, everyone. I'm Seth the Panda, and let's take a look at some classic games, shall we? As you can see by the title, the game I'm going over today is The Legend of Zelda. First off, here's a bit of history on the game. The Legend of Zelda was the very first Zelda game released. It centers its plot around a boy named Link, who becomes a central protagonist throughout the series. It came out as early as 1986 for the Famicom in Japan, and was later released in the Western world, including Europe and the US in 1987. It has since then been re-released several times for the Nintendo GameCube as well as the Game Boy Advance. The Japanese version of the game on the Famicom is known as the Hyrule Fantasy The Legend of Zelda. Now, here's a snippet of the basic story from the actual game. During his travels, he had come across Impa and Ganon's henchmen. Impa told Link the whole story of the Princess Zelda and the evil Ganon. Burning with a sense of justice, Link resolved to save Zelda, but Ganon was a powerful opponent. He held the Triforce of Power! Power... <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. Um, and so, in order to fight off Ganon, Link had to bring the scattered eight fragments of the Triforce of Wisdom together to rebuild the Mythical Triangle. If he couldn't do this, there would be no chance Link could fight his way into Death Mountain where Ganon lived. The gameplay. The game itself introduces a new level of gaming, one that includes role-playing, action, adventure, and puzzle-slash-logic. Something that should be noted about the game is that it gives you the option, and it is also essential to the story, is that you can explore areas of both the overworld and dungeons. Also, it should be noted as well that after you beat the game, there is a second more difficult quest which you probably won't be able to see in the footage on the screen. Before I go into my opinion, it should also be noted that the original Legend of Zelda game is littered with mistranslations, direct word-for-word -word translations, and odd quotes. The intro story is written poorly, such as saying the Triforce with power instead of the Triforce of power. However, for the Game Boy Advance and Wii Virtual Console ports, the message was entirely rewritten. Now, here's my opinion on this game. I gotta say, this game added something that both Mario and Sonic lacked. The save, save function. function! I think that's a great function, and that was a step in the right direction for video games. Seeing as some people may be on a level of Mario or Sonic, and if you have to leave or go somewhere, the only way to keep your progress is to keep your NES or Mega Drive on with your game paused. So, I'm very happy about that. Also, the puzzles are pretty fun to figure out, even if they're not that obvious. It's fairly interesting knowing that Miyamoto's idea for this game was inspired by the Kyoto countryside. So, to be honest, I feel like this game is where Nintendo was starting to grow at. Of course, some parts of the game are difficult, but the thing about video games is that there is supposed to be a challenge. And the challenge that the game provides may not be easy, but it certainly is fun, in my opinion at least. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, leaving a comment and a like would be appreciated, as well as a subscription if you're feeling generous. And maybe follow me on Twitter if you like.